Shall we pray? Our gracious Redeemer, our Lord of hosts, our Savior, and our King, 
own our everlasting prince that who died on the cross for us oh god daddy it's by your grace that we are here this morning and we want to thank you for that day on calvary precious lord that you sacrificed your precious life to atone for us oh god that we can come before your presence and we can have redemption and we can have dominion lord we all appreciate you precious lord for that sacrifice that you gave to us and today we recognize that that day on calvary was our independence day and it is our independence day now may you come and bless us lord this morning and lead the service lord we ask for your leadership oh god bless our offerings and our brethren that are coming on their way bring them here safely we ask this in jesus name amen shari please sit down hymn number 89 must jesus bear the cross alone to make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
Lord Church. I thank God once again for this match again. It's not easy to be around to the Easter festivity. By the grace, everybody is alive. We thank God. Amen. I like to make a joyful noise of your love. Watch a mau no ko be kamo. Watch a mau no ko be kamo. Oh, Wana mosio, wama we ono gojo, wache ba o noko be kamo, o chonya pe. Amen. Hymn number 29, I am resolved.
Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name this morning for your wonderful grace that has reached out to us. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, that we could come into your divine presence this morning because you've told us where two or three are gathered together in your name. Lord, you will be in the midst of them. And therefore, we are persuaded and we do believe that, Lord, you are here with us in this meet. So, Heavenly Father, we commit all things into your hands. Our prayer is that you who be in the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, Lord, may you come, Lord, and begin these Easter meetings with us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come here because we recognize what you have done for us. And Jehovah Savior, Lord, we enjoying the divine blessings, Lord, of that wonderful atonement that you purchased for us on the day of Calvary. We thank and bless your name. Even as we come to approach your word and Lord, rededicate ourselves during these meetings, our prayer is that, Lord, may you come and bless everyone. Lord, let burdens be rolled away. Lord, let there be a desire in our heart, a holy desire to be like you, a holy desire to strive, Lord, to be in your very image. Heavenly Father, a holy desire that to kick out everything of this world, Lord Jesus Christ, and create in us. Oh, yes, that bubbly desire to be in your image. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for the journey mercies that, Lord, you granted unto us to be here. We even pray for, oh God, our brethren that may be on the way coming. Our prayer is that may you grant them that same mercy, journey mercies, Lord, and bring them safely here, that together in one accord we'll be able to serve you in spirit and in truth. Bless the services and take total control. This is our prayer with all faith and thanksgiving, even through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So God richly bless you all. And thank you for coming to the service today. We want to take our seats and listen to these announcements before we go into the service. We'll try as, as preachers to be very uh, time and keep to the time. So we want to encourage you also that be sure that you are here on time so that the service towards the expansion project as well, well, well as also the welfare fund. Yeah. And this is a funeral arrangement of the late father of our brother, Martin Tete. Alright, to be some time in May, so the details will be given as we get closer to that. And as you know, the program for the Easter meeting, we are having two services today. The morning service will end at 12 noon. The afternoon service will start at 1.45 and will end at 4.15, 12.45. Having Sunday school for the children as well as the teenagers. So during the morning service like this, the children will be having their uh, Sunday school session in the multi-purpose building. And in the afternoon, when the service is going on here, the teenagers will be having their uh, uh, Sunday school lessons. And there will be an all-night prayer meeting on Friday, the 5th of April, which is a week from today. And on Sunday, there will be communion service, which will be Sunday, the 7th of April. So which means that we will have two services on Sunday, the 7th of April. 
The afternoon service for the communion will be from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And our sister Kafu, the wife of Brother Evans, uh, Botre gave birth to a baby boy last week, Monday. We Amen. thank God for that. Amen. 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 This is a wedding invitation to the church. Uh, it's between uh, Brother Isaac Opoku Bediako and the sister is Albert Ntiamwa. Uh, they both are the uh, church in New Abri. Yeah, New Abri is a it's on Saturday, April 20th, 11 a.m. So the church is cordially invited. Brother Isaac and Sister Alberta, in you are bring Saturday, April the 20th. Amen. Amen. So let's pray for them that all will go well. Amen. Amen. So once again, God bless you. And it's good to see everybody here for the coming as we start. There are many places that you could have been this morning, but you chose to be here this morning. My prayer is that God will not let your labor of love be in vain. Amen. Amen. And so we stand and read from a portion of the word. And we'll read our scripture for the meetings. And as you know, the team for the meeting is being in his image. Being in the image of God. And we trust in and believe in the Lord. That as we go through the services, God will just lift an image before you. You remember the story of Jacob? When he told his father-in-law, that so much cattle, whatever, when the colors are this, they will be mine. And when the colors are this, they will be yours. So, as the cattle went to drink, Joseph, Jacob placed an image before them. And the more they saw the speckled image, as they brought forth, all the, 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 the sheep, the, they all became that. Because that was what was projected before them. And that is what we want our prayer to be. That even as we go through scriptures, as we go through the message, and we see what the image of God is, we want to pray pride. And pride that is in his image. It has to be his image image in order that he can be united with her. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll turn to Genesis chapter 1 and we'll read verses 26 to 28. Shall we hear the word of the Lord? And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Amen. Amen. So when God has finished all his creation, when he has said, let there be light, there was light. Again, laba, laba. When he said, let everything breathe after his kind, created the cattle, made all his creation like we behold today. 
He needed to put all of that creation into the arms of somebody. Because he's the God of the universe. The earth is too small for his domain. So he thought, I'll find somebody responsible and make him in charge of it. So after all of it, he made man in his image. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Amen. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Let's read from verse 15. Let's read from verse 15. Talking about Christ Jesus. Who is the image of the invincible God? The firstborn of every creature. Praise the Lord. Amen. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invincible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Shall we take our seats? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So once again, we're glad to see every one of you in the house of the Lord. As we begin this uh, three days of meeting before us, we'll have two services today, this morning service, and then an afternoon service. And we'll do the same tomorrow, God willing. And on Sunday, we'll have one service in the morning. So once again, thank you for dedicating this time to be here. We certainly appreciate your presence being here. Our prayer is that we are not here, hallelujah, to see each other. But we are here to see God. We are here that God will come and bless us. We are here that he will bless us with his word. Because heaven and earth will pass away. Hallelujah. My words will fail, but the word of God will never ever fail. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we want to look at who is God and what is his image. Our overall team is being in the image of God. But this morning, we want to look at who is God. And what is his image? God willing, this afternoon, we would like to look at the first man in the image of God. And maybe the subsequent services, we want to look at how man fell from that image. And finally, we would like to talk about God restoring us to that image. So we trust in God to take us through the services. And as you come, just pray for the administration. That Lord, I want to be blessed. Hallelujah, Lord, Amen. I want to be blessed even Amen. as I hear your word. 
Lord, let something be said. Lord, speak to me. Lord, that is why I'm here today. That is why I am here this morning. So, Lord, I desire that you will speak to me. I don't want to hear any man. I don't want to hear Brother Isaac. I don't want to hear Brother Stevie. But, Lord, I want to hear from your throne above. Say something to my heart. Something that will quicken my soul. Something that will lift me up. Something that will stir me. Oh, to have that desire. That fervent desire. That Lord, I want to be like you. I don't want to just sing about it. But Lord, let that be my prayer. That is why we are here this morning. Who is God? And what is his image? And that is what we want to start, where we want to start from today. Even as we desire to be in his image. So in the scripture we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is the very first verse in all of the Bible. Hallelujah. That is the first scripture that we read. And right from the beginning of the scripture, God is introducing himself to us. And he's making us to know that he is the creator. This ocean we see, these beautiful plants that we see, these beautiful skies that we look at, the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that we see around us, his very first words to the human my race is that I am the creator and I am the one in charge. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That is what he starts by telling us. That he is the one that made all things. And so as we are here this morning, we are not here by chance. We are not here serving some imaginary something. But we are here because we are here because we are here to serve that creator. Right from the beginning. He introduces himself to us as the creator. The sea. And all that we behold, the vast universe, science will say the known and unknown universe. They're still trying to map out the universe. And I like will often say, our mile on earth is too small. The mile on earth is too small. So what it costs about the universe, they measure it in light years. The distance that light travels in a year. And maybe it's for you to imagine how far light travels in a year. In one second, in one second, light travels about 186,000 miles. Praise the Lord. Can circle the earth so many times. Hallelujah. And Amen. so that 186,000 miles, translated into one minute, which is 60 seconds, and into a, a, another hour, which will be 300, 3,600 seconds, and then translate that into a day, multiply that by 24. And maybe being very conservative, Multiply that by 360 days. That will tell you the distance that light travels in a year. And in this vast universe, the unit of measurement is the light year. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What an awesome God that we serve. What a great God that we serve. So we are here this morning. We are not worshiping any man. We are here this morning because we recognize who our creator is. He is the God of the universe. He is the one that has made everything that is known to man and unknown to man. Praise the Lord. In the book of John's Gospel, chapter 1, 
The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So right from the beginning this is very important. This is very something that should sink in my heart that even as I walk and traverse the surface of the earth, I am not here by chance. And let nobody tell you that you are here by chance. Let nobody tell you that you evolved from some monkey. Let nobody tell you that you evolved from something. But you are here because God the Creator in his infinite wisdom when he has finished creating all things he made a decision and like what we have always said and the prophet taught us that God's decision is ever perfect his first decision is perfect God is not man that he makes a decision and he improves upon it no hallelujah every decision he makes his so when he made that decision after all creation after all the trees after all the animals after all the, 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 the best of the field he said, I will make man in my own image hallelujah amen that man will have dominion over this. When God made that decision, it was perfect. So as we are here today, we are here today because we recognize that there is God who is creator. Amen. Amen. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. So everything we see today, everything we behold today, there is an intelligence behind it. And that intelligence is God. Praise the name of the Lord. And as you travel through the message, as you talk about who is God and what is his image. So in the beginning, that was the start of time. Hallelujah. Amen. That was the beginning of time. Amen. But before the beginning, Amen. Hallelujah. In Amen. the beginning, he created. Amen. There was a space of time when he was created. Amen. But before that, who was he? Amen. So he did exist before the beginning. He didn't start from the beginning, but he was there before the beginning. Amen. And only at the beginning of time. Amen. That was when creation was kickstarted. But before the beginning, who was he? Amen. Amen. We'll be reading a lot of quotes from the prophet's message to know who our God is and what is his image. That invisible being. Everybody knows that there has to be supreme being somewhere. But the devil comes and perverts. And so something that is the, is the big fish in the ocean, something that is, is the sun up there, because they look at all of the creatures and they look at the beautiful things of creation and it marvels man and when man marvels at the sum of the creation they think that we ought to worship that creation praise the name of the Lord who is God and what is his image so in the beginning the Bible says God but before the beginning who was he so in the message the Easter seal the prophet said now there's a great statement and there's a great statement and I want my minister brothers to try to understand this in the beginning God 
The grace spirit. Hallelujah. So Amen. in the beginning was that grace spirit. That infinite spirit. That sovereign spirit. And the prophet goes on. He wasn't even God. So we are now talking about before the beginning. But in the beginning, that is when his creative attributes were becoming into place. Hallelujah. Amen. But where was or who was he before the beginning? He was the eternal one. Never had a beginning. Never has an end. He doesn't live in time elements. Praise God. I get enjoy. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. His kingdom Amen. has no beginning. Amen. And it will have no end. Amen. And that is the God that we are serving Amen. today. Amen. That is why we are here today. Oh, dear, because me. we recognize what that God has Amen. done for Amen. each and every one of us. Amen. He was that great eternal one. Amen. Eternal means never had a beginning of days. Amen. Never had an end of time. Amen. He has always been. And as human beings, with our finite minds, as human beings, with our finite minds, hallelujah, we Amen. try to figure out the infinite God. You cannot figure out the infinite God, but all we got to do is to believe in him. Amen and amen. amen. God, the prophet says, is an object of worship. He had nothing to worship him. There was no angel, no nothing. Just God, him alone, eternal. But in order to be God, God being an object of worship, in order to be worshipped, in order to be God, in order to be who we know him today to be, there has to be something to worship him. So the prophet said he created angels and beings Amen. and cherubims Cherubs. and so forth okay, no, you know. to worship him. Amen. And his great plan began to unfold. So that great eternal spirit, that self-existent spirit, that infinite being, hallelujah, that was who he was, an eternal spirit, a sovereign spirit, in order to be God, in order to be worshipped, he has to make beings, he has to create beings. <coughs> And the prophet said, okay. he believed he first created angels. Yeah, Seraphim, Seraphim. 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 And yeah. when he created all those angels, yeah, when, they when they begin to worship him, yeah, then that eternal spirit, yeah, hallelujah, became God. But in that eternal spirit, in him, he desired to be worshipped. And as we go along, we'll see in that spirit, in that eternal being, were several attributes. And in the process of time, those attributes ought to be made manifest. So that we begin to see who that spirit is. As those attributes are being made manifest. Is identifying the spirit. It's making us to know who that individual is. So firstly, in him was the attribute to be worshipped. He desired to be worshipped. So the prophet said, he created angels and bees and cherubims and so forth to worship him. His great plan began to unfold. He had a plan, a master plan. Hallelujah. He had some thought in mind that he wanted to display the thought. And once he created the angels and the other beings, and they started worshiping him, he became God. 
an object that was being worshipped. And so when he did creation, hey, and so when he said, let there be light, hey, there were beings that were already worshipping him. Hey, because he was God. Hey, and that is why he was the creator. He was manifesting himself. Well, not just hey, an hey, object hey, to be worshipped hey, by, hey, by the angels, hey, by, hey, by the seraphims, hey, by, hey, by hey, the cherubims, hey, by hey, all hey, those hey, heavenly beings. Hey, 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 the devil himself. They were all created to worship him. And so when the devil bluffs you, let him know Satan, you are a creature. You are a creature. Hallelujah. You, you, are, you have nothing. You are a creature. And everything that has a beginning has an end. And your end is the lake of fire. That is what the Bible says. The Bible like it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 In the message, marriage and divorce, the, the, the prophet goes on. Hello, what yeah. is God? No, you know. God is a great eternal. Again, no, 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 no. At the beginning, way mm. back before there was a beginning, you know, the other. he wasn't even God. You know, no, Did you know that? Oh, no, no. And I thought he took this message to even bring these things out. To let us know it's a whole revelation in itself that in the beginning, he wasn't before the beginning, he wasn't even God because there was nothing to worship him. But that great eternal spirit, he desired to be worshipped. And so he's kicked that attribute of creator, kicked in. He wasn't even God. Did you know that? God is an object of worship. And there wasn't nothing to worship him. He lived alone. That is why they called him Elohim. The self-existent one. He dwelt alone. And he kept on kept on living alone. Oh, but there is something in God. This God that we're talking about, he lost fellowship. He lost fellowship. And that is why he even says it's not a big congregation. But even if there are two of you, like Adam and Eve, he soon came and fellowship with them. What a God that we serve. Oh, who loves to be fellowship? You love to be in the presence of that being. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in him was attributes. What is an attribute at all? Now you get something that will border on the lesson tonight. That I'm evening, Brother Abraham preached with Melchizedek. The morning he preached marriage and divorce. And in the evening he preached who is this Melchizedek. And so that is what he's alluding to. Now you get something that will border on the lesson for tonight. Notice. Come on. He was his attribute that was in him. Now it was in him to be a father. It was in him to be God. It was in him to be son. It was in him to be savior. It was in him to be healer. So all of these are attributes of God. It was in him to be father. So in, in Luke chapter 3, Look at our Where we read the genealogy of Adam. We call Adam session. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't believe. Rather, Luke chapter, Luke chapter three. Look at it. Yes, verse thirty-eight. Man, As it reads the genealogy of Adam. Adam session. Which was the son of Enos? Uh, Enos B. Which was the son of Seth? Seth B. Strangely, they didn't even mention Cain. It's a king there. Who was the son of Seth? Seth B. Which was the son of Adam? Adam B. 
which was the son of God. So Adam sees God as his father. Because in him was the attribute to be a father. So he wasn't only a creator, but he desired to be a father. So in him, this eternal great spirit, in him were several attributes. And we can talk about all the attributes of God, and we will never get to an end of it. But in him were attributes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. To be a father, to be God, to be son, in him was to be a savior, to be a healer. All these things here are just display his attributes. And there is nothing out of character. You think God didn't see the end from the beginning? Oh, suddenly he, he did. There is nothing out of all that church that should gladden the heart of the believer. That there is nothing out of order. There's no accident about your life. Because as a righteous individual, David said your footsteps. David said your footsteps is God that orders them. And so there is nothing out of order. There is nothing out of character. Your God, my God, the God of the universe is fully in charge. But because of the way man has gone, he has not made man to be a robot. But he has made man, hallelujah, to be a free moral agent. And so man makes certain decisions himself. And he allows it to go on. So he gives man his permissive will. But God has his perfect will. And that is where we want to find ourselves in always in the perfect will of God. So there's nothing out of Catan. Hallelujah. Amen. He could not just, he could not be just and make man to fall. He had to put him on equal basis. Of free moral agency. To make his own choice. But he being God, he knew that man will fall. Because he is infinite. Never has a beginning. Never has an end. His thoughts are way beyond what any man. It's that even as the heavens are so far away from me, so are my ways. So are my thoughts. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So in him were attributes. And he's manifesting those attributes. That great eternal spirit. In him was to be a savior. And so to save something, it must be lost. That he can save. In him was to be a redeemer. So to be a redeemer, he has to buy back and bring that lost thing back to the original place. In him was a healer. And so to manifest that attribute of healing, somebody has to force him that he can heal that he So in him were all of these attributes. And somebody will say that, oh, okay, so why, do, why does he blame us? The prophet goes, so he can't be a savior unless something is lost. He can be a healer unless something is sick. These things had to be that way. God made them thus so that his great attributes could be displayed. If there wasn't that, he would never have been a savior. But we know he was. Even before there was a time, he was a savior. Before the beginning, he was a healer. Before the beginning, in him was that to be a redeemer. Before the beginning, in him was to be a savior. Before the beginning, in him was to be a father. Before the beginning, in him was to be a creator. In him were all of these attributes that he is playing today. 
What an awesome God to be Amen. associated Amen. with. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, what an awesome God Amen. to be associated with. Amen. What an awesome God Amen. to Amen. say that I call you no more, lo longer servants, Amen. but I call you my friends. Amen. What an awesome God Amen. that the Bible tells us Amen. it does not yet appear what we should be like, Amen. but when it shall appear, Amen. we shall be like Amen. him. Amen. What an awesome God. Amen. Oh, to call and say, behold, Amen. what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called a sons of God. What an awesome God to be Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil threaten you. Don't let the devil put fear in you because you are serving an awesome God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. In the Bible, Romans chapter 9, when we read from verse 13, let's see what the Bible says. So all of these things that we see, somebody says, so why will he make somebody sick? Why does somebody become sick? Because in him are attributes. In him is to be a healer. And so he made man a free moral agent. And when he made that man that free moral agent, that man fell and allowed the devil to pervert the cells in the human being. The devil is not a creator. He is only a pervert. How he takes Amen. the original Amen. and trying to destroy it. Amen. And so bring sicknesses to Amen. us. Amen. But thanks be to God Amen. that he is a healer. Amen. That he can give us his promise Amen. to say the hallelujah. Amen. I am God that healer. Amen. Not Amen. some of your diseases, Amen. but all, all, all Amen. of your sicknesses and your diseases. Amen. Amen. That is why you ought to have faith in God. Amen. Brother, never give up. My sister, never give up. Just we ought to believe. I say we ought to believe. Keep believing, keep holding on. Abraham believed for 25 years before the promise that God has given him came to pass. So never despair, my brother. Never despair, my sister. When the devil comes around, tell me, I don't care whatever you whisper to me. I know my God is alive. I know my God created me. I know he's bigger than you. I know you are only a creature. My God is the one in charge. And in his own time, in his own time, you perfect all that concerned me. In Romans chapter 9, Romans, the Bible says, me, as again. it is written, Benagma. Jacob have I loved, Jacob, but Esau have I hated. Esau, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Oh God, for me. My for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then, it is not him that willeth, or him that runneth, but it is God that showed mercy. So it is not what you desire, but it's God showing mercy. That it is just by the mercies of God that we are here this morning. Somebody is not here. Oh, let's keep reading the scriptures. For the scriptures said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I may show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Yeah, because people knew Pharaoh. They knew Egypt as the superpower of that day. But God wanted to do something for all the world to know. There is someone greater. And that greater Jehovah is the God that we are serving today. There is none greater than him. I say there's none greater than him. So hallelujah, let your heart be our peace. I don't you, know me. you are serving the greatest of all. Oh, thank you, what are you oh hallelujah. Amen. 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 Therefore, had he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will he harden it. 
That will then say unto me. So why do you find fault with him? People. Why do you find for that somebody is a drunk? Somebody is an adulterer. Somebody is a liar. Somebody steals. Somebody is this. Somebody is a. Why do you find fault? If God, hallelujah, is not the him that willeth, nor runneth, but is God that does his own face. Why do you find fault? Paul is saying, he knew people ask this question. So Paul will say, Paul will say, so that would say, why do you find fault? For who had resisted his will? Nay, but oh man. Nay, but oh man. Who are thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why have you made me this way? Had not the power, the porter power over the clay of the same lamb to make one vessel unto Anna and another unto his honor, the porter has got the power to take that same piece of clay and make a pot out of it. And that pot will be on fire all the all his life. And he can take that same pot of clay and make a beautiful tea set that will always be on the master's table. Oh, that will serve the dignitaries. But they are all made of clay. Oh, that is why when you wake up every morning, you want to say, Lord, I want to thank you. You want to say, Lord, I want to bless you. Oh, for considering me to be part of your economy. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not anything that you have done. It's not anything that I have done. But it's God who has shown his mercy. That is why we don't have to brag. That is why we don't have to raise our shoulders. That is why you don't have to think yourself that you are somebody you are not. It is just the grace and mercy of God. It is just the grace and the mercy of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In the message, go wake Jesus. The prophet said, God in the beginning was just God. He wasn't even God. God is an object of worship. He was the great power God. Then he created angels. And angels worship him. So he was God. Then he created man. Now he is a savior. So there's nothing lost. Something had to be lost so he could display his attribute as a savior. You believe that? He was a healer. So there's nothing sick. So there had to be something sick to display his attribute to show that he was. He was father. See, and something had to be. He had to have a son to make him a father. So in this grace prayer that we are talking about, in him were all of these attributes. He had all, and these attributes are thoughts. Oh, he had these thoughts in his mind. Like you stay, you have all these thoughts in your mind. Oh, when I grow up, I would like to be an engineer. So that is a thought. But soon that thought becomes expressed. And so you put in motion. You start studying subjects. That will eventually make you to be that engineer. But that thought was already in your mind. And that thought is being made manifest. Oh, I want to be a medical doctor. And so that is a thought. And once that thought is conceived, and you speak it out, and then you start working towards it, Oh, so you start learning all the stuff. You go to the medical school. So all those thoughts are transmitted in your mind. One day, who you are, are those thoughts expressed. Hallelujah. Who you are? Are those thoughts expressed? I want to be an accountant. I want to be a banker. I want to be a builder. I want to be that good person. I want to be that good carpenter. These are thoughts. 
and then as they become expressed, our nature is molded into that. And in that great eternal being, he has so many thoughts. To be a savior, to be a father, to be a healer, to be a redeemer, or to be a son. Hallelujah. Amen. To be all that we see him today. Praise the name of the Lord. That great eternal spirit. In the message, the mighty God unveiled before us. The prophet said, in the beginning was the word. The word was of God. And the word was God. Hallelujah. Amen. Every man's word resides with him. And any true man is any man that keeps his word. Although man, you can't take him for his word. You can't take him for what he says. Because he's always lying. He can't keep his promise. But that is not our God. Our God is his word. Because you can take him for his word. So in the beginning, but before the beginning, in the beginning, he spoke the word. Let there be light. But before that word was spoken, before that beginning, those were tossed in his mind. And in speaking that let there be light, he was exhibiting the attribute of being the creator. So that thought in him to be a creator, he spoke out. Let something come into being. And it came into being. What a God that we serve today. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. We beheld him, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. So now in the beginning was the word. A word is a thought expressed. In the beginning, he wasn't even God. Now, our English word today, God means an object of worship. How confusing it is to the mind. You can make somebody a God. You can make anything a God. So don't let your, your, your business become your God. Don't, don't let uh, your uh, whatever it is become your God. But there's only one God. And that was the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other God besides me. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let, don't put something before you. Where that is the only thing that means anything to you. That thing can become a God to you. But let's learn to lay aside everything else. That the only one that draws our attention. The only one that, that, that gets our attention. Is that great eternal creator? Who are the beginning created of things? In the beginning, he wasn't even God. That is our English word today. God means an object of worship. You can make somebody a God. You can make something a God. But in the Old Testament in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God, the word is used. The word is used, Elohim. Elohim. Elohim means the self-existent one. What a difference the word Elohim is from our word God. Because God means an object of worship. But Elohim means the self-existent one. We as human beings, we cannot be self-existent. We cannot be almighty. We cannot be omnipotent. We cannot be omnipresent everywhere at the same time. We cannot be omniscient, knowing all things at the same time. But Elohim, the self existing one, he was almighty. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. And so even as we are having a meeting here, he has given us a promise that where two or three are gathered, he is there in the midst of them. 
So I believe he's here. So he see at the message of grace this morning. So he see at wherever he's engaged this morning. So he see at the living God of like Jesus. That is the God that we serve. He is an infinite God. So don't be scared of nothing. I say church, don't be scared of nothing. We serve the great eternal one. Don't let nothing frighten you. Don't let no sickness frighten you. Don't let nothing in this world frighten you. Because God, the one that you serve, the one that I serve, the one that we serve, he is the God of all creation. He is the omnipotent one. He is the one that can cause the rest to be parted. And we all know that water cannot stand upright. It always needs a container to stay where it is. Hallelujah. But it's the word that could part the Red Sea and cause the sea to form a wall on either side. And immediately the sea was parted, it was not a muddy ground. But it was a dry ground that the Israelites walked over. That is the same God that we serve today. Hallelujah. I said that is the same God that we serve today. Hallelujah. So don't be scared of nothing. Amen. Know the God that you serve. No wonder that Daniel said. They that know their God. There are some that worship they don't know their God. Like Jesus told the woman of Samaria, you people you worship, but you don't even know what you worship. And to the people that are worshiping, and they don't know who they are worshiping. Jesus is not a second person. Yes, again, the Holy Ghost is not a third person. There's only one being. Before he became a human, as a self existing one, he was the Holy Ghost. He was the Holy Spirit. As a self existing one, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, almighty. Amen. 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 In the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We're talking about who is God. And what is his image? This is your thing. Amen. Amen. In Revelation chapter 1, verse Amen. 8, Jesus speaking. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, Jesus speaking. Yes, you are. The one that the world today Amen. is celebrating Amen. because of the great work of redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've left off all the crap about Easter. The, the festival for the God of Astat. I can see uh, Astat the more. Astat the, the, God, uh, the God of the Venus, the God. Uh, Venus war now. Ja. Hallelujah. You Amen. know, Jezebel was the priestess of Astat. Jezebel, the God of Astat the more. And then Constantine. The Constantine. Hallelujah. In Amen. order to make the pagan festivals Amen. look Amen. like Amen. Christian festivals. Amen. He changed the festival to the God of Astart to be called Easter. Asta, Just like Easter, they changed, no. hallelujah, Amen. the festival to the sun God, and it. they call it Christmas. Praise the Lord. But Amen. thanks be to God. Everybody recognize, whether they believe Amen. or not. On the calendar, yeah, it is called yeah. Easter. Whether they believe it or not, it is noted by all human race in the world we live today that somebody died. And that somebody who died, it wasn't God sending his son, but God sending his son. But it was God coming down himself. Amen. Amen. And so he said this, I am the Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the the which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I know people read in the book of um, um, Isaiah, now, and they saw his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. 
And they say, see, see, say, Jesus was the mighty God. He didn't say he was the almighty. He didn't need somebody to say that. Yeah, he said it himself. He said it himself here. That I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I am the one that was. And is. And is to come. I am the Almighty. Amen. That is the God that we are serving. Praise the Lord. And that is who we desire to be. We cannot be self existing. We cannot be almighty. We cannot be omnipotent. We cannot be omnipresent. We cannot be omniscient. That Elohim expresses all of that. The self existing one expresses all of that. We cannot be that. The tree that you make a God out of, the tree that you make a God out of, or the building. It's not self existent. There's nothing in this world that is self existent. Everything here was made no by self. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything. The dress we wear was made by the tailor. The watch on was made by the watchmaker. Everything here was made by somebody. Because man is a mini creator. We'll get to that in the afternoon. So God in the beginning. Was life the eternal one. In him was attributes. And those attributes became words, became words. And the words became flesh. Jesus was the redeemer. And to redeem means to bring back. If he has to bring back, it had to be some, it had to be somewhere to be brought back. So you see, all people will never be able to see it because all people was it in the beginning. In the thoughts of God. You have to be in the thoughts of God right from the beginning to be able to understand to be able to see these things, to be able to believe what we are talking about, to be able to catch the revelation that God is the almighty one and there's none else besides him. I am God and there's none else. There is none else. There's none like unto our God. There's none like unto our Creator. There's none like unto our Redeemer. That self-existing God, eternal spirit. But as human beings, how do we appreciate His being? How do we appreciate what he is? How do we appreciate his thoughts? So in the process of time, that invincible God, that invincible God, in his thought, hallelujah, oh, to reveal himself to his people. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. No wonder the prophet said that Christ is the mystery of God revealed. So that is the highlight of my message. God to reveal himself to his people. And after revealing himself to his people, to have preeminence among his people. And the people that have fallen to restore them back to where they are. The three great mystery plan of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. You love the Lord? Where? It, and look at the billions of people on the earth. Today, that you were in the thought of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That before there was anything, me, 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 me. I was God thought about you. Jehovah thought about me. No wonder David could say, who is man that you are so mindful about? Because he thought about you. You are not here by chance. You are not here by coincidence. But God thought about you. 
and in the process of time he has expressed you are expressed oh hallelujah amen so that great eternal spirit that he was we read in john chapter 4 god is uh, a spirit money so that great eternal spirit took upon himself the form of a man and so the scripture, the second scripture that we read talking about jesus christ say who is the image of the invincible god that god that nobody could touch that god that nobody has seen that god that they knew he existed that he spoke to them that he demonstrated his man that through all his works through all that he was doing man was knowing that there has to be a supreme deity somewhere and they call him by all kinds of names. The People of Paul libation. Make and they say assassin. Yeah, who told you assassin? Yeah. Uh, and they say all kinds of things. There's a supreme being. He's above all. He's over all. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. And so he knows about you. Even the dress you'll be wearing today. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The color of the dress you'll be wearing today. The headscarf that you tie your hair with. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the God that we serve. So don't be worried. There's nothing to worry. Church, when things come our way, don't, be, don't, don't worry. Just pick up yourself and say, God, I know you know about this. And because I know you know about this, Lord, make a way. Jehovah, make a way. Because I know you know about like it. Like the way my boss spoke to me. Oh, Lord, I know he was going to speak to me. Like I mean, I Lord, give me that patience. Well, I mean, Lord, I know you are trying my patience. Like I mean, I can Lord, I know you are pushing me to the like wall. But like I mean, Lord, I know I am your son. Like and like you said about Job, that is who I want to be, Lord. That is what I want to be, Lord. He is that great eternal spirit. But in order to make manifest his image, he came down in the form of a person. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul writes to the Colossians that Jesus was the image of the invincible God. That God that we do not see. That eternal spirit. Oh, that we have so much about. That eternal spirit. That wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger. That eternal spirit. That told Moses, go and tell my people, I am that I am. The ever-present God. Moses said, I saw the hind part of him. And it looks like a man. That eternal spirit. One day, by the virgin birth, created a body. A body not born with sexual intercourse. Created a body and came to live in that body. And when he lived in that body, we could interact with him. That great eternal spirit, we could now interact with him in our own dimension. Praise the Lord. Amen. And in him, he began to manifest that attribute. He knew their thoughts. Because he was omniscient. He knew where the, 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 the ass would be tired. He was omnipresent. So he told the disciples, go to this village. And you will see an ass tied there. And lose the ass. And when the owner asks you, just tell the owner, the master have need of it. Could you imagine? The owner of us, who is that? I am the master of the house. I own this house. But when they told the owner, the master, the capital M, has need of him, he never questioned. Oh, God bring us to that place where we never question his work. The man never questioned his work. God help us. 
Mao. Never to question the word of Mao. the Lord. Maybe he didn't even know who the disciples were. Maybe he hasn't seen them his life. When I'm before, when I'm down. If I say, hey, hey, Julo, Julo, hey, somebody. Hey, but when he say, why are you taking this? It doesn't belong to you. Say, tell him like the master have need of him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That is the God that we serve. He became, Christ was the image Christ of that invincible God. Something that we can relate to. No, I mean, not sure. So in him we could see love epitomized. Well, like I said, I put them on the wall. In him Amen. was love. The very essence of love. That when he was being killed, he didn't only say that I love your enemies, but he manifested it. That when he, even his enemies were taking his life, he could say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what So it wasn't just being rhetoric and just telling us things. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wasn't just telling us, love your enemy. He wasn't just telling us, love your enemy. Yeah, but, like but he demonstrated he faith. that he is the very essence of love. He didn't only really tell like us that he is God that he let all our sickness. Yeah, like but that. when people were sick on this earth, he healed their sickness. Yeah, Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't only tell us that it was the resurrection and the life. But when men were dead, he called them back to life. He said, Lazarus, come forth. So whatever he was, whatever they have said about him, when he came down as Christ, he manifested who was. Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the message unveiling of God, like the attribute you see it is in God. An attribute is your thought. God in the beginning, the eternal. He wasn't even God. He was the eternal. He wasn't even God. God is an object of worship. He wasn't even that. He was Elohim, the eternal, Elohim but in no him was taught. Yeah, me he me. wanted to become material. Hallelujah. Amen. He wanted to become material. Amen. He wanted to become man. Amen. And so in Adam, Amen. he was showing us what he wanted to be. Amen. As a spirit being Amen. who could not interact with the physical Amen. world, Amen. he took that spirit being Amen. and placed in the body of flesh Amen. that Adam could have interaction with Amen. creation. Amen. We'll talk more about that in the afternoon. Amen. But in Adam, Adam, he was showing us his journey. He was showing us his plan. And so as that great eternal spirit, hallelujah, Amen. he created a body. Mary said, how can you create a body? The angel said, oh, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And what you think is impossible, oh, when the Holy Ghost comes inside the heart of the believer, what seems impossible, you know that all things are possible. Because there's a being inside you that believes the impossibility. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He wanted to become material. He, he wanted to become material. The God that an, said. An, 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 Peter said, Peter, okay. we walk with him. Okay, we handle him. What the word of life. What are you oh, he was in our boat. He, was, he wasn't some abstract something. Oh, but we beheld him as the only begotten. Oh, he walked on the sea. It's only God that can do that. 
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He told the storm, peace be still. E que arruma que esse And the storm of Eddie. You know what the disciples said? What manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? That even the sea I can support and the waves of obey. He was the creator of the sea. He was the creator of the waves. And so when he speaks, they have to obey. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That is the God that we are serving. We are not serving some wooden image somewhere. We are not serving some image that some man fashions somewhere. An image made of clay and someone else. That cannot talk. That cannot see. That when it is raining, they have to run and lift it up. That is not a God that we are serving. We are serving the living God. Not the God of the dead. That is why he told them. God is not the God of the dead. So when they talk about the God of Abraham, because Abraham is alive. When they talk about Jacob, because Jacob is alive. Our God is not God of the dead. He is God of the living. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But he wanted to become material. And what did he do? He spoke a word. And the word was material. That's the whole picture. From Genesis to Revelation. It's nothing wrong. It's Elohim materializing. So that he can be touched. Is Elohim materialized? So that he can feel the feeling of our infirmities. Is Elohim materialized? So that he can be hungry. So that when you are hungry and you need something to eat, oh, he knew how it was hungry and how he needed something to eat. So he understand when you pray, Lord. I need something on my table to eat. He understands you. That is the God that we serve. He is so great, yet he humbled himself to be identified with us. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Elohim materializes so he can be touched, so he can feel. And in the millennium, there's Elohim sitting on the throne. See, that's right. With all his subjects okay, around him, that he predestinated before the foundation of the world. That is the God that we serve in church. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he came in Christ Jesus, he made manifest. He made clear. Not in dark speeches. But he manifested, he said, this is who I am. If you are looking for somebody to be like, this is who I am. Hallelujah. He was so humble. In the book of Philippians. Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 2. We are talking about who is our God. And what is his image. Philippians chapter 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if there's something that you want to console yourself, with, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having this same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. But today, you know what Ma will say? How dare he think? He, he thinks he's think. better than me. Who is he? That he thinks he's better than me. But the real true believer, the real true child of God, the Bible says, like, eh? esteem others. Better than yourself. But the self-centered one. I say the self-centered one. We always say, who does he think he is? How dare he speak to me like that? What school did he went to? Hallelujah. What, what kind of degree has he got? That is man. 
But when that man becomes like Christ, oh, hallelujah. Amen. He esteemed others better than himself. Oh, brother, it doesn't matter. Oh, sister, it doesn't matter. Don't worry yourself. It's okay. It's all right. Let's keep on. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Forget Amen. about it. It's, it's in the past. It doesn't matter. Let's pray. Let's yeah, 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 move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, the love of God. It's that is the true man. believing child of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Esteem others better than themselves. Oh, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We are talking about what his image is. Who he is and when he came down, how he cared for others. The prophet said, true Christianity is living for others. Not living for yourself. But when he came, he came because of us. Not because of himself. He was a self existing one. But he came because of us. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. These were his thoughts. These were his attributes. The things that were being made manifest in him. We have to talk about who is God and who is his image. This is the image of God. This is what he manifested. And that is what we want to be like him. To have the mind of Christ. Where you can esteem others better than you. Hey, did, did you know what he said about you? It doesn't matter, brother. Yeah. It doesn't matter, sister, yeah. what he said about me. I'm only flesh and clay. I, I'm only human being. So he's at liberty to say whatever he wants to say. Hallelujah. I don't Amen. hold anything against him. I know it's the devil that inspired him. Say what he said. But I don't hold anything against you, brother. I hold nothing against you. That is where we want to be, church. And kick out all these little things here and there. That is what we want to kick out. Look at the brother next to you. Look at the sister next to you. That is the one that you are trusting God to spend eternity with. And you can't agree with him or her. You can't even manifest love. You can't even demonstrate care. No, Hallelujah. Amen. If you can't demonstrate, if you cannot demonstrate here, how are you ever going to be there to demonstrate? When? God help us. Now, be in His image. No, this is His image. That omnipotent God. That all-powerful God. That omniscient God. The all-knowing God. The omnipresent God. The God that can be everywhere. The, the Almighty. Yeah, look at what He took upon Himself. Who be in the form of God? Taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He didn't care who he was. He didn't go everywhere bragging, I am God, I am the creator, I am this, I am this. Even when they were coming to arrest him, he was so common. That when the soldiers came, they didn't know who of them was. They needed somebody to betray him, to tell him this is the Think of it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He was in the form of God, but he taught it not to be robbery equal with God. Made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself. Just imagine the king of kings. Simon invites him to a feast. And the prophet said, No, those days they travel on foot. And the path that they travel on is the same path that the animals. The rich one have the horses. 
the camels, the poor one just went by foot. But the rich one had the horses and the camels and the asses and they rode upon. And the same along the same track. This animal dropped their pieces. And so those that walk on foot, as they trek, oh, they will step on all of these feet. And, all, and so by the time they get home, that is why they had water to wash their feet. And washing all those smells, washing all those bad odors around them. And when Simon invited Jesus to come, when he went there, nobody even washed his feet. Because you know who the feet, foot washer is? The prophet said, he was the lowest person in the society. So to the point that even the lowest person in the society, the foot washer, didn't even have no respect for him. That's how he humbled himself. Yeah, he made himself a foot washer. And that is why Peter could say, Lord, Peter, you cannot wash my feet. Because they all knew who the foot washer is. There's nobody in the house. There's nobody in the house. Hallelujah. When the people came, he washed all the animal feces and dirt on their feet. But Peter, Jesus became that for us. Yes, my friend, I can hear you. He did wash our feet. And so Peter had a reason. Peter, when he said, Lord, Lord, my God, you are not going to wash my you feet. Know me. Because he knew the foot washer yeah, he was nobody's society. But he humbled himself. And if we are going to be his image, we need to learn humility. I say we need to learn humility. We need to learn to humble ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Leave all those things behind. When we go to the grave, none of your degrees will be there. None of your achievements will be there. None of your cars will be there. Your house will not be there. It is what you did with the Lord. But Abraham said, when that man came, he said, I will tell you the story. Abraham said, when that man came, Abraham said, when that man came, 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 when that man your insurance will put me in the grave. But this blessed assurance it will get me out of the grave. That is what we desire. Church! Amen. Amen. Who is God? Amen. And what is his image? Let's go on. Made himself of no reputation. Look at the way the creator standing before a creature and Pilate and Herod saying that, don't you not know have got power to, to set you free? So no man has got power. Yes, sir, it is given to him of God. So don't brag yourself, church. Don't brag yourself, my brother. God has not even promised you tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Amen. It always strikes me when our brother after church God knocked down at the junction here. Hallelujah. He came to church. Going home with the wife. And never got home. And maybe when he left to church and talking to the wife, maybe they had plans. My brother, God has not promised you tomorrow. So don't brag. Don't bash your chest. Who are you? Nothing but a piece of clay. Hallelujah. Amen. That God had breathed into you to become a living soul. Look at that rich man. He looked at his bands. He looked at his harvest. So my soul rejoices. The harvest is extraordinary this year. Oh, just eat and drink. Oh, after the harvest is plenty. Oh, the bank account is plenty. Oh, the vehicles, the articulators are all there. God said, thou fool. Tonight your soul will be required. 
and we we'll know who all those things are. Maybe if uh, so if you are here today, be glad, be gracious, be Let grateful me unto the Lord Let me that you have the gift of life. Bless the name of the Lord. I to obey you. That God that has granted you the gift of life. I can well, I mean. This is who he was. I mean, he made himself of no reputation. I mean. Hallelujah. Amen. Took upon him the form of a servant. I mean, I was made in the likeness of man. I mean, I mean. And being found in a fashion as a man. I mean, I mean. He humbled himself. I mean, I mean. Became obedient unto death. I mean, I mean. Even Death on the cross. Death that was reserved for criminals. Death that was reserved for the outcast in the society. He didn't have a noble death. Like John the Baptist. They beheaded his. They him. Somebody that introduced the Messiah. You think that, oh, he will lie gently in his bed and give up the ghost. No. What a horrible death he died. God help us. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every day that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not the second person. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And he did all of that. That when we look at him, will reverend him in all. Hallelujah. Amen. That we can look at him and look at ourselves look at the body. Way. If my God, my creator, condescended, came down earth, oh, hallelujah, to Amen. take upon him the form of a man, to be rejected, oh, hallelujah, Amen. to become a man of sorrows, Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 53. As we look at the image of that invincible God. In Isaiah chapter 53. Who had believed our report? That when you hear this is about God. That is why Isaiah says, who can believe the things that we are saying? People become presidents. They become head of state and all the kukusem that they do. Oh, don't you know I'm the president? One day you'll be in the grave and it will be my God that will eat your flesh. So don't lift your shoulders. Oh, I'm, I'm the MD. You are MD. Right? Praise the Lord. Amen. God help us all to humble ourselves. Hallelujah. People Amen. can be so proud Amen. and Amen. so arrogant Amen. that even Amen. when they are in the wrong, Amen. they don't know how to say, I am sorry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sorry I didn't Amen. be the brother. Oh, I am sorry. Amen. Parents can be wrong and they Amen. don't know Amen. how to say, I am sorry to their children. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God Amen. help us all. He is molding us into his image. He was our father. What's that? But look at how he humbled himself. So, Until we think of him as somebody of no reputation. Hallelujah. That is why we love him. Oh, hallelujah. Like Amen. we often say at the workplace, respect is not commanded. Respect is end. By the way you conduct yourself, by the way you live your life, praise the name of the Lord. God help us all to be like Him. Amen and amen. Amen. Don't worry, we'll finish before 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 53. Behold, who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there was no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected. When that invisible spirit became a visible image. This was what we saw in him. But in all of this was greatness hidden. In all of this was greatness hidden. In all of this was omnipotent hidden. In all of this was omniscient hidden. In all of this was the almightiness of God hidden. God help us all. He is despised and rejected of men. Amen. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God. He was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us. All. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shearer is done. So he opened not his mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. What a God that we serve. Amen. Yet I Amen. want to think about him as a princely one. I can robes. And when he's walking, yes, my majesty. Your two for the Forget about that. But this God we say, he is such a humble one. And that is what we want to desire to be. To have that mind of Christ. To be in that glorious image. Amen. 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 The message, the identification, the identified Christ of identification of Christ of all ages. Maybe may I break it down. In the beginning was the eternal. It wasn't even God. God, our English word, is an object of worship. But there wasn't nothing to worship him. He was just eternal. Yeah. In him was attributes. Anyone knows what an attribute is? In other words, in him was his thoughts. Yeah, me Just thoughts. That's his attribute. That his word, the yeah, God yeah. expressed, is a word. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. Before it was even expressed, yeah. it was a thought, an yeah. attribute. In his thinking, yeah. he was to be God. So probably created the angels first. Uh, and then he was worshipped. He was God. And then in him was attributed to be a father. To be a son. To be a savior. Nothing lost. Something had to be lost. Hallelujah. So Amen. there has to be a way for that. To be a healer. Nothing sick. So he had to have something to get his life. He's only displaying. Amen. Amen. So who is God? What is his image? Let me just read one more. Could the mighty God unveil before us? Reading from paragraph 69. But in the Old Testament, in Genesis 1, yes, uh, in the uh, beginning, God, uh, the word used. Elohim, me self-existing one. What a difference the word Elohim is to our word God. Elohim means the self-existing one. We cannot be self-existing. 
We cannot be almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. That Elohim expresses all of that. We cannot be that. Paragraph 71. So God in the beginning was life the eternal one. In him was attributes. Those attributes became worse. And the word became flesh. Jesus was the redeemer. Hallelujah. To Amen. redeem means to bring back. So who is this God we're talking about? What is his image? He was that great and is that great eternal spirit. That self-existing one with all these attributes in him that he has been manifesting through the ages. The time the thought was expressed and that word in due time became flesh. So in John chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible, the scripture said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was of God, and the word was God. And in John chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible said, he was in the world. The word was made by him. And the word knew him not. And in John chapter 1 verse 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth and as we read in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for it pleased the father in Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 it pleased the father that in him should the fullness of God dwell. And lastly, in 1 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, without controversy, without controversy, no more argument. Great is the mystery of godliness. God manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So that great spirit, that self-existent one, the omnipotent, the omniscient, the omnipresent, the infinite God express himself in a human race, express himself in a human form, so we can better perceive who he is. And when he manifested himself, he demonstrated his attributes. And as we go through the study of the stature of the perfect man, what God wants us to be, to have the faith of the Son of Man, to aspire for the virtue of the Son of Man, to be, to have the knowledge of the Son of Man, and his temperance, the godliness, the brotherly kindness, the charity, those are the things, the virtues that we desire God help us all. Living for others. Loving beyond measure. Demonstrating the fullness of the Spirit of God. The invincible God. That is who Christ was. He was the very essence of love. The ultimate forgiver. The ultimate healer. The ultimate savior redeemer. Jesus was the image of the almighty God. He displayed the almighty God in human form. Telling us who God is. Manifesting to us who God is. A tangible, visible representation of the God. And so as we speak of being in his image. That is the character of Christ. That is what we desire to be. And that is why he came down in this our age to pay the price on the cross of redemption that we might be restored to be like him. Do you love him? Shall we stand to our feet? Want to sing that song, Oh, how I love him, how I adore him, Hallelujah.
Oh, how I love him.
the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we think 2,000 years ago, how you consent, condescended upon the earth, taking upon yourself the form of a man of no reputation, and yet you walk all that lowly road to Gethsemane and continue to walk that lowly road to Calvary and to die in that shameful death on the cross of Calvary all because you had us in mind this day we want to say Lord we thank you Lord this day we want to say Lord we bless your holy name Lord this day, we want to say, Lord, we appreciate you, Lord, for all that you have done for us and for all that you are to us. We give you the praise and glory. Cause us to meditate upon these things. Cause us to recognize the God that we serve, that you are still the most high God, the Elohim, the servant, the same one. The Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Omniscient, the Omnipresent, all oh, the self existing Sovereign Supreme One. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us to be part of your heavenly heritage. Our prayers that give us the grace that even as these thoughts come to us, may you give us the divine revelation. To take this season, that our lives will be transformed, knowing that our God is the creator of all things. Bless these words to our hearts, and Lord, even as we take a break, may you be with us, Lord, until we assemble again in the afternoon at your feet. We thank you for the service this morning. We bless your holy name. Let your blessings that never cease and pass at all things and all understanding be our portion even now and forevermore. With this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 So God bless you.